Hey guys, welcome to this video where I'm going to do a refill on these gel extensions that I did last video and I'm going to pop on this set right here. So this is an encapsulated glitter set and I'm going to show you how easy it is to encapsulate glitter in hard gel. So first of all, I'm going to grab my dust collector and my e-file, which is a Melody Susie Scarlet e-file that I've had for years at this point. And I have this five in one bit from Amazon and I'm going to start removing the old gel. I'm not going to remove too much of the gel because it is, I don't have that much of a regrowth and I don't have any lifting. So I don't need to take it all off. However, I do like to work on quite... I don't like to work on too much bulk, so I prefer my surface to be a bit flatter. So I'm just going to take off whatever I need to take off, but it definitely doesn't need to be all filed away because there is no lifting. So for this nail, I'm going to do an encapsulated smile line. So on the index nail, I'm doing an encapsulated glitter French. So I do need to take off, thin off the end of the nail. So at the very tip, you can see it's much thinner than the rest of them. And then on this ring finger here, I'm also taking off the bulk of the glitter because this is also a nail where there is going to be loose glitter encapsulated. So I'm going to take this bit right now and push back the eponychium and it's going to take off all that dead skin that is grown onto the nail plate when your nails are growing out. So even if you can't see it, there is dead skin that sticks to that nail plate as your nails grow out and your new nail is exposed. So this is my favorite bit to just gently push back the eponychium and expose that dead skin on the nail. It is... I think I got this bit on a multi-pack on Shein or Amazon. I can't remember which one, but it was one of those multi-packs, but it's just such a nice bit. It has, it's so gentle as well. So if you hit off your skin or anything, it's not going to cut you because it's a diamond bit. It's nice and gentle. So next up, I'm going to go in. I started off from right to, from left to right, and now I'm going in from right to left. So halfway through doing this step, I just put my e-file in reverse and go from right to left. Next up, I'm gonna use my mini mandrel and this mini mandrel bit, and this is 180 grit. I usually use 240 on the natural nail, but if I have to, I'll use 180 and just go a little bit more gentle with it. And I'm just going over the new nail plate and also the rest of the surface of the nail. So just to kind of smooth it out before the next gel application. And it's basically just kind of roughening up that nail and making sure that the gel is gonna to stick to it and there's no shine left anywhere. It's nice and etched, but obviously be very careful at this point that you don't overfile because if you overfile with any sort of bit, you're going to thin out your nails and then it's just going to lead to damage and also not re not good adhesion. So your gel or your acrylic or your gel polish, whatever you are using will not stick well if your nails are damaged. So after all the filing, I just grab my lint-free wipe and soak it in acetone and just wipe all the dust and debris from the filing off the nail before going in with my acid-free primer from Glitter Bells. So when I'm applying this, I just apply it to the new nail growth and then pull the brush down the nail. Don't have too much product on the brush because you don't want to flood your cuticles with this product. Just gently popping it onto the new nail growth and then pulling the rest of the product down the nail. And this is kind of like a sticking agent. So it's like a double-sided little sticky tape for your base gel when that goes on. And I'm gonna use the Manicure Company's system. So I'm gonna go in with their Bonder. Now this is like, the, like a base gel basically because you do have to cure this Bonder in the lamp. So I'm just gonna do the same thing as I would do with any other clear base gel and apply it to the whole nail plate without flooding the sidewalls or the cuticles. And then I'm gonna pop it in to the lamp to cure. 
If you made it this far in the video and you're enjoying it, please consider subscribing and comment down below if you have any questions. Feel free to ask anything about anything that I'm doing in this video and I will definitely get back to you as soon as possible. So that's the manicure company's builder gel and I'm going to go in with cover pink and the first nail I'm going to do is the index finger which is going to be the glitter French. So I'm going to go in with a slip layer and I'm not going to go down all the way over the nail with this one because I just want to create a smile line. So I do a slip layer almost a little bit more than halfway down the nail and then I go in and grab a bigger bead with my brush and I push it up as far to the cuticle as I can go and I move side to side down the nail and drag the gel down, not losing contact with the brush until I realize that I didn't have enough gel on my brush and I have to go in and get more. That is perfectly fine. You just plonk it on top of the gel you've already placed and start the process again, dragging it down from side to side. And here I'm just trying to mimic a smile line. So I am doing my best to make this into the shape of what a pink smile line would be. Once I have that done, then I'm going to pop my finger upside down to let gravity help the gel go into the center of the nail. And then I pop it into the lamp to cure for two minutes because this is a UV gel. If it was LED, you'd probably only have to cure it for 60 seconds. So this finger now is a full gel application. So I'm going to show you from start to finish. This is my slip layer. So I'm painting on the slip layer and then I'm going in with a bigger bead. Same thing again, I am just going to go from sidewall to sidewall up as close as I can to the cuticle and pull it down the nail like this. So the good thing about gel is it's not going to harden, it's not going to do anything until you cure it in the lamp. So hard gel, especially in builder gel, you definitely have more time to work with it than say a builder in a bottle. They're traditionally soft gel gels and they run quicker than these builder gels. These builder gels, you do have more time to work with these so I'm just adding a little bit more gel to the tip area because I did notice it was lacking a little bit and I'm pulling it up towards the apex and using my liner brush to help perfect the shape So now I'm just grabbing my hand file and I'm refining that smile line as well as I can. And then I'm also going to finish file the other gel nails before I go in with the design. So they don't need too much finish filing as the application wasn't too bad. But I do just go in and make sure there's no dips or lumps and bumps in the nail. And then I will wipe off with acetone and go in for the next part of this glitter gel encapsulation. So that's the glitter I'm going to use. It is a beautiful emerald green glitter. It is perfect for St. Patrick's Day or if you're a Taurus, it is the same color as the Taurus birthstone. It is absolutely gorgeous. It's like a chunky hexagon mix with a little bits of fine glitter as well thrown in there. But what I did was I painted on the clear gel onto the tip and I didn't cure the gel and then I picked up some of the glitter and just placed it into that wet gel. And then once I am happy with where the glitter is, I'm going to pop that nail into cure just to make sure that it cures the wet gel underneath. Now, in hindsight, looking back, I did have a color that was exactly like this green glitter. I do realize that for the next nail and I do put that down before I put down the glitter. So it just helps a lot when you have a color very close to the glitter and then you put the glitter on top of it because it just 
doesn't leave any spaces. So basically, then I'm going to grab my clear gel and I am going to encapsulate that nail. So I'm just going to go over with a little stip layer and then a bigger bead and encapsulate. So doing the same method as if you were building a nail, I am going to go down and cover every single part of this nail with the clear gel to make sure that when I go to file over it that none of that glitter is going to be filed away. So this is the polish I was talking about earlier. It is from Halo UK and it is the color Neptune. Now this is a stunning color. It just doesn't have any chunky green glitter in it, but it's very, very close. So I'm just going to paint a layer of this onto my ring finger and I'm just going to cover the whole nail plate with this. And on like the same as before, I'm going to pop on the glitter over the wet gel. So I haven't cured this layer of polish. I'm going to make sure that the glitter falls into that wet gel and sticks there. So once I'm happy with the amount of glitter that's on it, I am going to pop it into the lamp to cure it for 60 seconds. And then when it comes out, I'm just going to grab my little fan brush and brush off the excess to make sure that there's no chunky bits sticking out or anything like that. So this is how it looks. It looks really, really good. Again, we're going to go over with the clear gel. So this is the encapsulation method and I am going down gently with a slip layer. And once I have the slip layer down as much as I can, I go in with the bead and encapsulate. So doing the same thing as we did to the index finger, I am just trying to cover every bit of this nail with the clear gel without making it too thick, which is a bit of a task. But it is, you can always finish file afterwards. I would prefer to have a little bit more gel than not enough and have your glitter filed away. So then once I have that done, I pop it into the lamp to cure. And next up, I decided to go in with some rhinestones. So these are glass rhinestones and they are really, really pretty. So I went in with SS9, SS10 and SS12 and my Macar rhinestone glue. And I just popped some on the middle and the pinky to match up with the glitter. So now we're going to finish file the encapsulated nails. I did top coat the other nails off camera just to get them all safe. Uh, so nothing would get caught, no dust from the finish filing would get caught in that top coat. So they're all done and all safe. But this is me just going in with my mini mandrel bit and it just saves a little bit of time going in with this bit for the filing instead of hand filing the whole thing. It also helps me when I'm going around with this bit just to see where the dips are and the lumps and bumps. I just find it a little bit easier. You just have to be careful that you don't over file and that you don't, you know, file away that glitter that you've worked so hard to pop in there. And this is my favorite part. It's revealing the glitter, popping on that top coat. Look at that. It's so pretty. You can see all the glitter encapsulated in there. It looks so, so good. There is nothing like glitter encapsulated. It's so, so pretty. It does take a while and it does. It is a bit of a job then to remove it because you do have to file right down. But I do think the effect is worth it. It's so unusual and looks so dimensional. So that's me just doing my index finger and capping off here. And then I'm going to go on to the ring and again, revealing that glitter. Oh, it's so pretty. I love loose glitter. But if you've made it this far, thank you so, so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed. I really loved how these nails turned out. And yeah, I'm going to link my original set in the at the end of this video. So if you want to watch that original pink set, that is a full set with tips. I will link it at the end of the video. And thank you so much again. And I'll see you in the next one.